Vonage Business is making a lot of noise in the uh, industry. You probably have heard of them. If you have not, you don't have a TV or even maybe a radio that plays commercials because these guys are throwing money at advertising in this marketplace. When I was in New Jersey visiting Mitch, you know, for a customer appointment, we went to Philadelphia. I think we heard a Vonage Business commercial like four or five times. So they are out there in a big way. They're throwing money at advertising. They're throwing money at the uh, agent channel. They've got some unbelievable pricing. Um, the service has been excellent. I know being telecom people in here, you may associate Vonage with like a residential play, you know, cheap phone service at a house that may or may not work. This is not that, this is totally different. It's a business grade service. It's based off of, you know, uh, business, you know, phones, business, everything. So I don't want to steal, you know, Darren's thunder over here. So I'm going to pass the, pass the mic to him and uh, Darren Gabbert, take it away, man. Fantastic, thanks very much. All right. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you for your time today. Um, my name is Darren Gabbard. I am the Florida Channel Manager here for Vonage. And what we've got slated today is a little unusual. We're going to do a kind of a semi-webinar, uh, uh, as well as have me, you know, address certain aspects of the, the Vonage solution. But the last time I was here, we actually started talking about who Vonage is and, and what we do in the marketplace. And as Dan says, a lot of people have misconceptions about where we started, how we became into business, and so forth. And we touched on that in the sense that Vonage did not home grow um, their VoIP product on the business side. What they did is they went out and acquired a bunch of companies that were already established in the marketplace with some pretty unique and interesting technologies. And that's culminated the several businesses we bought into two platforms. One's called Essentials, and we addressed that the last Lunch and Learn. So with respect to folks who may not have seen that or heard that, we're going to move on to the other side of the business platform today called Premier. Now, so the difference between the two in a quick nutshell is um, Essentials is a proprietary platform that was built by the company we acquired, Vocalocity, now Vonage Business Solutions. And it's a, 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 a entry-level platform, if you want to call it that, from one to maybe about 100 seats, depending on the application, right? Fully featured, the whole nine yards. It is not a downgraded platform by any stretch. It's just more of an economic play for people just doing simple POTS line conversions and that sort of thing. I'll be sticking around after my colleague is done talking about Premiere to talk a little bit more about that. Should you guys have the time, the interest, et cetera, we can go ahead and revisit some of that. Moving forward today, in respect to my kind of haphazard audio connection here, whatnot, Thea's uh, got a little difficulty uh, hearing through, but she'll be speaking. You should be able to hear her quite nicely. Thea is going to run us through the premier side of the platform, which is our Broadsoft platform that goes from, call it about 25 seats on average, well up to over 1,000. It's got some you know, really cool features there. So uh, Thea, can you hear me okay? You can. All righty. So this is my sales solutions engineer, Thea Rasmussen, and she will take it away. Excellent. Thanks so much, Darren. And thanks for joining us today and letting us kind of have your ear for an hour here. What we're going to talk about today is a little bit of the business review of Vonage business and that aspect of the company and where we're at today. Um, we will do a recap of the acquisitions uh, that make up the premier side of the house. Talk a little bit about products by market segment in regards to essentials versus premier. And then talk about what makes up the premier network, the network delivery options that we have in place and then the UCAS feature set that we have in place as well. Now, one of the big differentiators on the Premier platform is going to be the back office system and the support and the white glove treatment that we provide from an installation perspective. And so we will touch base on that as well as it's a big differentiator in this, in this market. So launch business at a glance here. Of course, as, as we just heard, there's a lot of marketing dollars going into this brand recognition that we have. Vonage is known in the residential space. They started that um, a, a long time ago. Um, but now we are moving into the business side of, of the house in the larger to enterprise size uh, business opportunities. So we're going to talk about that primarily today. Um, again, a billion-dollar publicly held company, and we do have those purpose-built solutions for all business sizes, right? So the essential side that's been around for, for a couple years now is going to really play well in the 1 to potentially 100 space, but we can also go up to multi-location, multi-state opportunities with thousands of phones per location. So on the Premier platform, there's three big key differentiators for us in this space, in the hosted PBX space. 
One, and in, in first and foremost, is our nationwide private MPLS backbone that we build our platform upon and support our customers through. And then the customization that we've made to the Broadsoft platform is a big differentiator as well. So there's a lot of features and functionality and integrations that we have in place and dev teams in-house to make this really, truly a Vonage Premier platform and not just a Broadsoft play, right? And then, of course, that back office system, we named it Zeus, the god of clouds. We thought we were quite witty there. Is our back office, our BSS OSS system that helps us uh, facilitate installations and customer relationships moving forward and after the fact. So to recap the acquisition structure that really got us into this, to this larger business space, of course the Vonage Business Solutions or, or VBS was, as Darren mentioned, the acquisition of Vocalocity. It's a proprietary infrastructure and public data centers and a really uh, a big value add in the, hosted, in the hosted space in regards to over-the-top service and very quick deployment structures, right, and kind of a do-it-yourself model. The Premier platform is made up of predominantly two Broadsoft-based companies, one of which is Telesphere. If, you're, if any of you are familiar with that company that was acquired um, in December of last year, and then Simple Signal, also a Broadsoft company. Now we have merged those product sets, we have merged those networks from um, a redundancy and cohesive nature in regards to that premier product set. Uh, we have also just acquired iCore, which is going to bring us into the cloud space in regards to infrastructure as a service as well. And that will probably be a third, a third lunch and learn for you folks as well to cover that product set as well. One of the very exciting acquisitions that we made after Simple Signal was that of GUnify. And GUnify is really a, a development company that was really targeted towards integrations with Broadsoft and some key CRM tools that customers already have in place. What they have fully baked in regards to an integration with the Premier platform is going to be Salesforce, Zendesk, Google Apps for Work, also inclusive of Zoho, which is that free CRM through the Google Apps world. And then, of course, Clio, which is a big player in the regards to uh, the smaller law firm space. That integration and that work is continuing on the roadmap next is NetSuite and, and Oracle Sales Cloud. So we do have that dev team in-house now and that support structure in regards to custom integrations if there may be a need for that for any of your customer base. So when we're talking about the market segments and where these two disparate platforms fit in on the Vonage business side, again, we have that essentials product that is an over-the-top or bring-your-own-bandwidth play, and it's very much driven on self-service and very high-volume, quick, and low-touch implementation, very fast turnaround and, and customers up and running over-the-top um, with, with a host of PBX system. Um, so again, we kind of see that playing mostly in the 1 to maybe 1 to 50 space, um, but there is, of course, some overlap in regards to – All right, so, so going back to the market segment slide here, when we talk about Vonage Premier, uh, there, there are some key kind of points that point us to that product set. One is if that customer requires a, a private MPLS connection to their location for quality of service as well as service level agreements or SLAs that would tie to that as well um, from, from a corporation perspective. So if they have very high needs for very high voice quality service, um, we can provide them an extension of our private backbone and provide nationwide MPLS, right? If they're also looking for an MPLS provider in conjunction with a hosted PBX service. We can roll that all into the same platform, the same billing structure, and everything will be managed end-to-end -end by Vonage Business. We also have solutions for video conferencing as well as web collaboration tools. Those two facets are also an over-the-top service that can be sold a la carte, so we don't need to have our hosted PBX in place necessarily to sell that type of product and service, um, but it does provide desktop sharing and and endpoint agnostic video conferencing solutions. And what I mean by that is I can join via a browser using WebRTC for voice and video. I can join via an existing room unit endpoint, so Polycom HDX, Group Series, a Cisco room unit, life size, and I can join with that device um, via SIP and H323 capabilities. And then I can also call in via a phone, right? I can do audio only if I'm someone outside the organization, or if you're using a video-enabled device on the Premier platform, 
You can also just dial into a bridge and have that Hollywood Squares type look and feel from a video conferencing perspective right from your phone or from a soft phone on your computer. So lots of capabilities with our video conferencing product as well. Another differentiating product on the Premier side is going to be our SIP trunking platform. So we do provide SIP trunking to a list of interop tested IPPBXs. We can do that in a privatized manner over those MPLS connections for quality of service. Or we can also do it over the top as well. So we'll talk a little bit about what that product looks like today as well. And Vonage Essentials has a contact center solution, but if there is more advanced contact center needs, we have a plethora of options on the Premier side to accommodate that. If you're familiar at all with the Broadsoft-based contact center play, we do have two flavors of that in regards to interfacing. So we have the Broadsoft Thin Client web-based interface that uh, supervisors and agents can utilize. But we also utilize a company called Unity, and they have another option um, for a desktop chat client, supervisor client, and wall board. So we can kind of customize a solution on that intermediate call center play depending on what, um, what your customer's needs are. Now we also have partnerships with two of the very advanced contact center plays in the market, and those are LiveOps and InContact, if you're familiar with those folks. That is the much more advanced contact center play. Um, they're a spendy bunch, but if you have an opportunity that's looking for that type of capability, which includes inbound queuing as well as outbound queuing, so dialing functionalities, progressive preview, predictive, um, any kind of multi-channel queuing with email or website chat and SMS, even social media, we can also provide that on the single billing infrastructure on one paper, and then we also have direct network-to-network -network interfacing with those cloud, cloud contact center providers so that everything will maintain on a privatized network so we can still adhere to those quality of service requirements even in an advanced contact center play. So again, I'm going to bombard you with a bunch of products and services trying to get the juices flowing to see if there's any opportunities out there that might want to take advantage of the Premier product set, but also let me know if you have any questions specifically. I'm not going to get too deep on all these products. Just want to give you the landscape of what's available to you folks. All right. So um, based on a couple of seminars that I've been to recently, um, I would probably throw that new product set into the category of being as disruptive in the marketplace as, say, Frame Rate Relay was to private uh, line networks or as MPLS was to Frame Relay. It's going to be that revolutionary, and here's why. If you haven't seen or heard it, basically it's this. I can establish private connectivity over public bandwidth. Okay, there's a little device that sits in. I could have one, two, three IP providers. That device is going to scan between the three, constantly pinging, seeing who has the best connectivity, the lowest latency, and all that other kind of good stuff that makes it you know, really worthwhile. So companies are telling us that they don't want to really keep investing in MPLS. Why? Cost, uh, inability to, to flexibly uh, expand and contract that bandwidth, right? Um, yeah, and, and, and they can't really go virtual, right? So you've got a lot of these outlying offices that can only get to uh, the, uh, the company via you know, uh, cable codes and so forth, right? Not a lot of MPLS capability out there, certainly not at an, an efficient cost. So how does that technology now translate over to Vonage and Premier? Well, when you need class of service enabled bandwidth and you have multi-location, we are now bringing a product that we're calling VQ Edge that allows us to establish pri private connectivity via, you know, very much like an MPLS circuit over the public internet. Okay, so where you have those outlying offices that can only get on cable and you need some redundancy, you can actually have um, cable code bandwidth, a T1, LTE links, all on one device and it'll scan and as anyone drops or, or has any kind of corruption over, it's just going to fail over and give you that connectivity that you're looking for. So all of that that we're talking about here in terms of advanced call set features, uh, IVR, um, you know, audio, video, web, uh, can now be brought to you either by a direct T1 connection, MPLS, NNI, or now on our VQ Edge SDN uh, product platform. So I'd love for you guys to keep that in mind. The reason I bring it up, especially down here in South Florida, is we're not popped in Florida uh, currently. So when we start looking at connectivity back, I got to backhaul it to Atlanta, pretty costly, or I've got to do an NNI. So it limits my ability to connect. VQ Edge takes all that right off the table. I don't care who you are, where you're at, if you've got public IP, I can get you connected on a class of service enabled you know, bandwidth for our voice products. All right, any quick questions on that? 
Dungeon in the Silence. Is awesome. It, a rental or is it, a it is. It is. It is a rental, and it is part of our t overall MRC. So an average device, um, depending on bandwidth, uh, if you're talking about 100 megs or so and down, is about 150 bucks a month on top of the um, on top of the voice solution. It's not on essentials yet, um, but what's happening, you know, on a broad scope is we're, we're kind of combining all of the product set SKUs. So in the same sense that we don't buy bandwidth on the essential side, that may be coming. So if you want to buy essentials and MPLS, hopefully uh, in one Q, two Q, that should be an announcement that I'm looking forward to. But as of right now, um, bandwidth, class of service, contracts, um, and VQ Edge are only going to be on the premier side. Essentials is a month-to-month, -month, bring your own bandwidth, pay in advance type of solution. Uh, well, so, so what Thea hinted to in the beginning was we can do a thousand, but it depends on what it is. If you've got a hundred locations of 10 seats each, not a problem. Essentials will handle that. If you're talking about one location, a thousand seats, I'm going to recommend that you go with the, the premier site all day long for a variety of reasons. But my typical deployment, just so you know, on the essential side, 10 to 20 seats on average. And I've done 50, 60 with no problems. And you're just shipping phones and Yeah, so the essential side is a very much, like I said, a, a quick turnaround. I, I've actually turned people up on a soft phone in about three and a half hours. I don't wish to work under that kind of pressure, <laughs> but know if you've got somebody who's really, really just down, we can do some pretty, pretty amazing things on that side. So we can establish the, uh, the account, create the DIDs, um, Open that account and so that you can then download the, uh, the, uh, the client on either the cell phone or the soft phone, and you can start making calls while you're forwarding your, your uh, you know, losing carrier to us. Now, Premier, completely different uh, type of experience, right? Larger enterprise, generally a circuit involved. There's a full-on scope of work. There's a technical meeting. We're going to map it out. We're going to have the client sign off on it, the whole nine yards. There's obviously paperwork for the contract that needs to be done ahead of time. So I would not look at that solution as you know, something that needs to be done quickly, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so they're, they're very distinct platforms with regard to that. But um, going back into you know, kind of the things that we're doing here, right? Um, Vonage is, is absolutely essentials and premier in every sense of the word. We s turn up about 3,500 businesses per month nationwide on the essentials platform, okay? And those can be one, two seat, you know, single man entrepreneur type uh, entities through larger businesses for sure. But it's 3,500 businesses a month that are turning to Vonage and oftentimes as they seek to grow are doing the migration over to the premier side as their business warrants, all right? So it is a viable, viable business platform. It is not something that, you know, a lot of my competitors will, will regard as, um, you know, the, the, the next leap above our residential platform or anything else like that. All of that stuff couldn't be further from the truth because when we bought Vocalocity, Vocal OS, they were a leading entity in the space. All we did is really slap our name on it, add some technical resources, add some, some network capability, a whole bunch of brain power and some marketing, but otherwise it was a rock solid enterprise platform that we just capitalized and, and expanded nation nationally, okay? The Broadsoft platform, many of you guys know, it seems to be the platform of choice uh, of darn near everybody who's in VoIP these days. Mm -hmm. So there's not a lot of difference there in terms of the core elements. What we're talking about is a lot of those add-ons and strategic partnerships, you know, such as in contact to be able to hit very high-end robust call center solutions. Okay? Any questions? Got the after lunch blues, guys. <laughs> All right. Compensation? Anyone? <laughs> All right. There's a good question. Um, so right now, Vonage on either the essential side or the premier side are paying a three times MRC upfront bonus. On the premier side, if you bring me a qualified opportunity that wants to see a demo, and I mean qualified, decision maker, you, everybody on the call, we're going to give $100 for every demo you guys bring us. That's it. All right. If they are, if they are buying within the next six months, give or take, and you've got the right audience, We'll take them as they come, all day long. Um, we pay one-time uh, upfront MRC on the circuits, and then, of course, the residual on, on all the other uh, components. On the essential side, five seats or more, we give away free phones. They range from Polycoms to Cisco's to Yalinks. 
And we have highly subsidized phones on things like Polycoms and Cisco's by and large. We start talking about 12 line phones and the like. Okay? So like I had an agent yesterday ask for um, four, four Polycom phones and he wanted the 400s. Would you be able to include those for free or we have to pay an additional upcharge to get the 400s? So, so technically anything under four they pay, but we're seeing a lot of competitive pressure where people are giving away or highly subsidizing the 400s. So I have certainly uh, field authority, if you, you want to call it that, to go ahead and match. Cool. All right. So yeah, in, in that particular instance, um, the competition, I think, was giving away the, the 400s after discounts and so forth at about like the 65 buck per device level, which is uh, certainly uh, <coughs> a, a fair discount off of the generally 100 to $155 price range at, at normal retail. Okay. Like yeah, so I can do 310s, 410s if you're running gigabit networks um, and you're looking for just basic phones to accommodate the network side of the house on that. Um, but yes, I can, I can look at competitive pressures and, and try to do what I can to match. But the typical rule is five seats or more and I can give those away free all day long. Okay. Did you say you only got paid one month on the, on the circuit? Upfront bonus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. No, no, residual on all things, upfront bonus, uh, one time MRC on the circuit portion. Okay. Now, on the, on the VQ Edge, that buck 50 for the device, give or take, again, it could be higher if you're doing uh, gigabit connections and so forth, but if you're talking about 100 megs, give or take, that device ranges about 150. That will be a uh, commissionable product as well. It's, it's considered an MRC. Okay. And that can be both, we can bring the bandwidth or it can be bring your own bandwidth. So if that client, and this is the way most of them are, we're finding through our test period, they already had a number of IP links from a variety of partners. So for them, it was just simply lay our device right on top. Now you've got your instant redundancy and you have the ability to do class of service enabled uh, 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 voice calling. You're thinking, you got something for me, Paul. I mean, we're, all, <laughs> we're all familiar with broad stuff, so what mm. So, well, there's two things. So, so um, Thea first talked about Zeus, right? So that's our onboarding platform, if you will, right? Our implementation uh, structure. Um, compared feedback that I've heard, I don't know this uh, firsthand, but feedback that I've heard from a lot of partners that work in that, in that side of the equation say that that is where half of the voice implementation problems tend to go wrong, all right? So we actually have cured that by and large. A lot of our partners have come back and say, what we've done there has been truly revolutionary. Okay, so we're gonna be able, again, collect all those facts, understand what's going on, get a clear implementation plan, and make sure that it goes smooth as silk. That's the first part that differentiates the, the Vonage Broadsoft platform. The second is really with regard to a lot of those add-on platforms, right? So we start talking about voice video web, talking about contact center management, being able to, you know, do time of day, day of week, skills-based routing, all that kind of stuff like that, and reporting, all right, very instrumental. A lot, of, a lot of Broadsoft partners have similar types of partnerships. I don't know that they have the in contacts of the world level partnerships across the board. So I don't know if that's a hell of a differentiator, but it's certainly something that we have. So you integrate like directly with Salesforce? Yes, with now that was gonna say, that's the big third for me. Not third, uh, well, let me answer the integration in, in a much more broad sense. So right now we have about seven platforms that we have absolutely integrated completely with vetted with the you know with the uh, the underlying manufacturer uh, so that it all it works all the way through some of the ones that are coming are going to be microsoft link we're, we're somewhat integrated with them now but that's going to be fully baked out here in the next quarter uh, oracle so forth we're, we're bringing on more and more every single day all right if you have a custom homegrown package or some other off you know uh, the beaten path uh, type platform that might be publicly available if your revenue is total about $5,000 a month, we'll do that integration for free, okay? If it's less than that, then we're gonna look at revenue and margins, obviously, in accordance with the time and, and energy it takes to uh, feed in. Do they have APIs? Are they REST? Are they SOAP? You know, how are we gonna do that integration? To what level? Are we talking about click to call? Are we talking about being able to, you know, just click out uh, from, a, from a phone record? Are we talking about doing customized reporting? When we analyze all of that stuff, then we'll be able to come back and do a time and materials based on technical um, you know, requirements to get that done, okay? But again, I think when we start talking about integration, um, you know, I've heard 
uh, various uh, competitors uh, on the airwaves talk about, oh yeah, we got Salesforce, we've got this, we've got that. And oftentimes that integration is something very, very light, like a click the call button on the website or something of that nature. If you have deeper needs into that CRM, we are already there on about seven major platforms and we're gonna be there, you know, we're adding on maybe like two major providers a, a quarter at the, at the rate we're going. So and I do know, again, the, the, the two that I just mentioned are slated before the end of 1Q next year. But that to me is huge, guys. If you wanna start getting away from just a straight up price per seat conversation and differentiate yourself in the, in the, in the marketplace, it's gonna be to that, that law firm, do you use Clio? If so, how important is it to your organization? Wouldn't it be great to be able to log and talk at the same time and track all of your case numbers to the time spent so that you could bill back accordingly? Those are the things that are gonna get buyers really, really excited. And that similar kind of discussion, you connected to my Bluetooth, I think. <laughs> <laughs> um, so those are the things that are gonna get people very, very excited. And if you can find that kind of integration strategy with your, your client base, irrespective of whether on Salesforce or Clear or what have you, you're gonna find a conversation that says, seat price, okay, that's fine. We get there is one, but it's not gonna be the central focus of the conversation. It's going to be about how can you improve my business and integration is definitely the, the, the discussion point of the future. It really is. Now, you add on all those value add products and partnerships that we have for connectivity within, you bring your own device, within the network, you know, being able to come on and off the network at will, remote users, the platform's got that, but it, the other piece is really key, and that's what, what interface to the company intelligence are they using, and how, how best can you mesh those two? If you do that really well, like I said, price per seat becomes a non-starter. Excited, any questions? Uh, no? Yeah, hey. switching, do you do an edge mark? Yeah, so on the essential side, we, we have a wireless router that, that we can provide, um, but we really, that's really a plug and play, bring your own network component type you know, solution. Does that wireless router do QoS or anything? No, no, that's, that's basically just to make it compatible with our uh, data pushes and things of that nature and not imp impede with our signaling, okay? On the Premier side, yes. Manage, unmanaged, the equipment can be bought, rented, leased, um, you know, we've got uh, switches, uh, both POE and non, uh, managed and non. Uh, all of those, likewise, can be purchased, rented, or, or leased, except in the managed scenario, of course. Um, but yeah, everything that you would need to be able to interface with us. And are you going out to install it, or is it drop shipped to the IT guys? Yeah, so Premier is, is, is very much, thank you, uh, Premier is very much a white label, a white glove type of implementation, no doubt. Essentials is a drop ship to the user, and they would uh, basically unpack plug and play. I will say that one of the things that I've done, because we do rely on you, our partner, to help A, set the expectations of what that platform is, does and is, is gonna do for their company. But I go out personally anywhere in Florida, um, every partner's first deal for sure, to make sure that A, you guys look good for having them take your, your recommendation to use Vonage, make sure that they're up and running and happy, because that affects my revenue, obviously, if they don't like it. And if it's big enough, I will go out to every single deal that you guys bring me. But there is an expectation that the customer does use our, our very, very well-developed platform of customer service and tech support tools where we can remote dial in, check the nature of their, uh, of their network, you know, recommend configuration changes or even router settings and so forth to make the, the network compatible and to unplug and play, all right? We have two, two mechanisms that, that basically help with that. One is, is, is you guys to a certain extent. If you want to do it yourself, or if you have partners that you want to be able to recommend uh, to, to help with some of that provisioning, because we all get, there's, there's a senior level employee that's not going to get on their hands and knees and look for a, an ethernet port. We get it, all right? So we're looking at the partner to assess what that environment's looking like. Do they really need outside? And if so, we can either add the, the setup fee on our uh, quote and bill, and if we do uh, bill and collect it, we share 50% of that with you, um, most of my partners sit back and say, well, wait a minute, I'm doing pretty much 100% of the work remote. Fine, you guys can tell me to take that off the quote and charge the customer directly yourself or use it as a, as a giveaway, sort of a, a value uh, item that is costing you ba basically nothing to give away to help secure the deal, right? So you can use that as a sales tool, all right? But yes, I'm looking at you guys to, to fully assess, is this a plug and play type environment? Are they gonna be okay? Do they have any kind of IT resource? 
something you and your partners can help with, something I can help with locally. If it's not, then let's move it into Premier where we just sign it, turn it over to the implementation team, and then they take care of everything else from that point forward. Yes, sir. Can you talk a little bit about uh, packet prioritization on the network? Sure. What aspect of? Yeah, on the Premier side, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna give you class of service enabled bandwidth. Not, not, on the side. not on the essential side. It's a it's a it's a BYOD public IP, straight up plug and play. All right. Now our intelligence, obviously, and our um, call it, you know, wide connectivity with uh, tier one appearing points and so forth gets you to our network faster, and handles that coding um, a hell of a lot better than most that may have you know far less density in terms of IP providers. So we are told that in, in the realm of things that we actually have a very, very high voice quality um, you know, track record as compared to most. Okay? But it is public IP and I can't sit back and say I'm going to give you, you know, class of service, you know, uh, um, an SLA on that any more than the next uh, you know, public co hosted provider can. I thought I saw a hand. Sorry, anything else? No? Yeah. All righty. With that, I will call it a day. Appreciate it. Thanks so very much. I was waiting for that one more.